You had your chance. Oh. You had your chance to wipe out that wretched family and you failed. Yeah. Doesn't matter. There's still time. I killed even less of them this time. Past is the past. Let's just look to the future, shall we? I guess I killed the same number of them. Death. Death takes many forms. It could mean change, transition, transformation, often interpreted as a, a beacon for the hopeful. In your case, it means, well, it just means death. Hey. <laughs> wow, yeah, you sure sound like you're on my side, lady. <laughs> oh, wow, you're still going. Okay. <laughs> can't just can't get control of yourself. The sun. The vitality of a new day. There's still time to wake up to the warmth of a night survived. Your choices, your actions, your very life hangs in the balance. It's up to you to find your path in the darkness and see the sun rise once again. Judgment. Judgment Day is upon us. That's what you'd expect from this card, isn't it? Though perhaps in this case, it's simpler than that. Perhaps one's own judgment, a snap decision to make, can save them from their own personal day of reckoning. Every step matters, every decision tipping the balance one way or the other. Take your time, think, and maybe survive. There's always more than meets the eye. Would you like me to show you? There are always so many cards for these later, at least in these later chapters. I think the earlier ones have fewer cards, and that's why I just don't find any sometimes. But like, that was three cards, and last chapter was also three cards. Like, they're so common all of a sudden. Uh, somehow I'm finding more of them per playthrough now. Uh, and on top of that, wasn't the Hierophant in this chapter, which is the one that causes the uh, revelation of it, where you actually get to see the carnival burning, which I guess I didn't get this time. But I'm glad I didn't get it this time because, well, we could do the we could make her feel, fail the QTE and get impaled by that spear, which is a different outcome. But uh, what happened is last time she because I had that card, that's the, all we got to see was that vision. We had, we didn't actually get to look at what any of the cards do. Granted, they're not very helpful, so there's that. But, uh, that sets up an interesting thing where, uh, if you get the Hierophant card, you get this big revelation moment, uh, although it is stuff you can pick up through context clues overall, but also, uh, how do I put this, uh, if you are buying into the idea that these cards are supposed to be helpful guidance, which they really aren't, but if you treat them like helpful guidance, then... It's extremely noteworthy that in the chapter where they give you the most possible cards, if you get the Hierophant, you can only watch that vision and not any of the other visions. So you don't actually get any advice or helpful information for what to do. All she does is give you the card that conditions you to maybe make the mistake of not shooting Silas, which will kill you. Uh, and she very specifically does not read any of the other cards for you in the chapter that is the end of the game where you are the most likely to die and the stakes are the highest. Like, that's how this generally works. So, like, you're going to the highest stakes situation and she doesn't tell read you any of the cards and just throws them away, basically. Yes, good. But I can only delve deeper into one possible future. Can you clean your ball? So which is it? Choose. Judgment, death, and the sun. Well, this one has a hobbit and a doggy on it, so... What? One last time. Go back. Go back and end this. 
the entire vision is just Jacob in the light with a weird uh, letterbox effect on it, which is a weird thing to have in a crystal ball. Well, I guess I'll go fuck myself. I think this playthrough is going to be like an hour shorter. I think we're already on our way to, towards the end here. But the combination of surviving characters. Oh, God, my head. This is worse than homecoming weekend. Welcome back, Emma. You live to the end. Well, you live till now. Get out here. Hope you don't find Silas or Caleb. Oh, you don't play as her. Okay, so we know for a fact that if you go out there, you die. Tree. We've seen this scene a few times now. Laura! But yeah, we know that at this point, like, this is, a uh, What is it? Uh, he'll... How the hell am I get killed by Caleb. Who at this point is the only wolf. And at that point was the only wolf, because Nick was dead, and Emma was dead. So nobody else was around to be a wolf. But hey, in this time, guess what? Guess what, Max? In this timeline, you have no blood on your hands except for all the literal blood on your hands. But that's yours? A lot of blood just gets around in these transformations. I still understand how he... I understand that, like, for the full effect, him popping up in, that, in those clothes is funnier when he's fully cleaned, but I don't know how the fuck he got clean. Where the hell are my clothes? It, make, it makes sense this time because she actually took his clothes this time, but last time it didn't make any sense. He should have just been wearing his own clothes. You gotta be kidding me. Those are like small branching parts in the story that feel like they're scripted to happen, and so I can only imagine it's a glitch okay. when they don't. Gotta find Laura. Like, that continuity problem has to just be a mistake, right? That's all I can guess. Is that he he's supposed to have his own clothes if Emma didn't take them, but we never got that. This would be a hell of a funny reveal now because Emma took his clothes in this playthrough, but it was spoiled by last playthrough, doing it for n no reason. So we just walk to the end of the pier and then we sit there doing nothing. Because if he actually goes, he dies instantly. <laughs> Just instantly. That's just exactly where Caleb is at that exact moment. No escape. It's kind of funny. We'll just leave the hat this time. Press the hustle button. stay. Good dog. Unfortunately, you're not allowed to interact with the story. I kind of wish that he would, like, just stumble into the story. He'd be like, oh, fuck. Well, Help me. I did not get you guys killed. Okay. Well, can't get much worse than it already is, right? You probably can kill them in that right. scene. Just like the cartoons. It's been off and on all night. Gives us a little time. It's just once I caused a different thing to happen, I figured I might as well succeed at that. Right, right. Oh, we should have just been swimming in the lake all night. And die of hypothermia? No. Y'all have boats. 
All right, well, we're good now. <laughs> Night's not over yet. These fuckers know we're in here, and they're coming back the first chance they get. Great news, okay. All right, we gotta get a vantage point. What state are we in? I don't, I don't remember where this takes place. Where is Hackett's Quarry? It's the summer. All I know is that I'm in California, you can pretty much just stay out all night during summer and you are not going to die of hypothermia. I promise. It is incredibly not possible. All right, we're gonna go up to the attic and get the, uh, the trail cam again. And we'll have a whole ass podcast to listen to, I guess. Also, I need to find my way upstairs again. This is actually a really big environment. With not necessarily that much reason to be able to monitor the whole thing. You can see why they would block the stairs to stop you. Although, I, 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 would, I would almost accept a little, like, nah, don't need to go that way. Cutscene. Instead of blocking them with furniture like the way they did. It just seems like a bit much. Where have I seen this emblem before? Discarded jewelry thrown off in a scuffle. The inscription reveals it belonged to Bobby Hackett. Yeah, Bobby didn't fight anyone up here. In either timeline. But it's always up here. What is it? A ring. With a crest on it. Oh, very fancy. You can never pull it off. Sorry. I completely accept I'm probably wrong about some of these. But I think some of these are genuine continuity mistakes or even glitches. Like where like maybe they scripted certain things to be callbacks to specific events and, and have all these branches in the story, but then they just aren't connected correctly. So that shows the wrong thing sometimes. In particular, uh, a friend of mine went and dove to get the rivet, ar the, the, the rotator arm thing from the water and successfully finished the cutscene and got it. And then the, and then the story said, and then the part was lost forever, despite the fact that he clearly had the part, like it just w was wrong about what he did in the scene, which reflects a few of the things I pointed out. Yes. Trail cam footage. It's like they're looking for something. Yeah, uh, in Chris's surveillance room, he's storing all the footage. I think you might be right. Ha 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 ha! I completed one thing, the one that affects the the podcast at least. Doing all the other, doing every history pickup and every tarot card and every whatever the other category was would have been a lot to multitask with a guide. But now the podcasters will be less disappointed with us. That's a timeline change. I genuinely don't know what side to think as far as like whether or not these are like gaps in the story or gaps in my memory or just genuine glitches. If they are glitches, that'd be kind of a bummer. Not just for the obvious reason, but because, like, I think this game's, like, four months old or something? Or more? So you just, you think they would have patched a few of them by now, if they're just showing the wrong scenes on accident. But who knows. We don't have silver bullets! <laughs> Better hide! A long time ago. Long enough ago that it was okay to have an oil painting made of yourself. I kind of want an oil painting of me now. <laughs> Whew. All right. Good luck, everybody. You need to, we need to hide. Uh, nobody is defeating Caleb in this timeline or Silas. So uh, anyone who gets attacked either dies or becomes infected and then just never gets saved because the game's going to end. Nope. Oh, wrong one. Every dusk and dawn all through the summer. What doesn't kill you'll make you stronger. stronger. 
We're here to lead the way. That meets for life, we're proud to say. Shout at Stratton, shout out loud. We're hackateers. Two months and you never learn the words? <sighs> <laughs> So because I killed Chris, there is no ending where we have to deal with Emma and Nick. At least not now. Maybe I could have not killed Chris? Because I could have just not shot. In which case, they might be really fucked. Emma. You're alive. Yeah, well, don't sound so disappointed. What the hell happened to you? Where are the others? I don't... I don't know, okay? Everyone's sort of... everywhere. We need to get somewhere safe. Yeah, sure, whatever. Dude, what's up? What do you... what do you mean, what's up? Look around! You're being all weird and mopey. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> Spill it. Don't kill it. So bl I'm so glad you both survived this. Uh. Look, I'm sorry. Okay, it's just this isn't exactly how I pictured the last night going. Yeah, you and everybody else. Yeah. Hell of a way to end the summer, huh? Man, how did it come to this? Uh, Earth to Jacob? What's happening right now? Okay, shit. Um, I gotta come clean. Um, what do you mean? Shit. Uh, Emma. Look, it's my fault we're stuck out here. Oh, Jacob. I. I mess with the fan. You know, when I realized we were seeing another night, this is exactly what I worried about. I know, I know, I'm so, and I'm sorry, okay? I, I didn't mean for any of this to happen. Okay? I just, I wanted to spend, I wanted to spend one more night with you. You know, together, like, like before. No, I still have feelings for you, Jacob, but this was a summer fling. That's it. We're... We're not good together. We're just not. And you didn't want to spend more time with me? I don't want to be in a relationship with you. You've got to respect that. Look, um... I know it's not going to make any difference, but... I'm sorry. Even if it means you're never gonna talk to me again, I just... I want you to know that. <sighs> then she'd at least have, like, a little fun tonight. You know, in spite of everything. She's covered in blood! How can you ask me that? <laughs> you're a real piece of work. He is, he really is. Look, what can I do to make this better? Jacob, there is no making this better. All you can do is hope you live long enough to take responsibility for your actions. It's not long before sunrise. All we have to do is wait it out. Can I wait with you? Free country, man. Please jump in the water. <laughs> Just jump in the water. Actually, I have no idea where you are. You're not on the island. Just losing my mind that she's covered completely in blood. So they don't they don't show up at the lodge and affect the ending. Aww. 
Uh, run! Let's go, let's go. I don't- what is waiting gonna do? You don't have silver. You don't even know about the silver, I don't think. Because the, the bracelet scene never even happened. Unless Silas is about to go in that basement he's never been in before and find the silver. Let's not do the beam again. I don't know how the window will help, though. Oh. No. Okay. This seems... not well planned out, actually. Uh, I think that- I think he can just, like, do some crazy jumps to catch you. He's he's falling pretty slowly, weirdly. <laughs> it's just right fucking there. You end up in the same place. Uh hide? Oh hi. Uh timing. Didn't even know you were gonna be in this scenario. You can hide together. Now is it a moral choice of who lives based on how well I hold my breath? He's deeper in the room, that's bad. She's by the door, so she can escape out the door if you, if you find the right moment to run. Wow, it's really tall. That was surprisingly early, which makes me think that if you wait longer, is there a second chance that's also a moral chance? Is he getting away? Okay, what? And then they just beat up at the same place! Okay. The cracks are showing. Really? The, cho the choice is gone because Abby doesn't call the attention. We're gonna Jurassic Park it, let's go. They always hide separately. That just doubles the chance of being found. What is this Phantom Menace Gambit? You are so in the open that your head sticks out of the cover, which drives me crazy in every movie it happens in. Just how often people's head just clearly... You're, you're not even hiding right now, effectively. It can see in the dark. What's happening right now? to the same place! If the freeze? Okay, sure. Let's see how bad this goes. Does it just not notice when doors... You went in alone! You left him out there! Are you locked in here? Why is she pushing on the door that is operated by... <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I don't understand! That she died? <laughs> How did she die? <laughs> She's like, oh no! 
I'm shoving the door and it won't open. I forgot what door handles are. I guess I'm dead. <laughs> how did she die? How did, how did she die? 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 One, if you make a door that has a handle on the inside, I don't know, I imagine it can open from the inside. Why would you make a freezer that you can't open from the inside? But, but, guess what? Extra detail, uh, I think you can survive in a freezer for a bit. <laughs> you know? It's cold. People survive in the cold. She's got like a crop top, like, sweater thing going on. It's just probably not that much. It's probably not very good for the cold. Uh, but it's something, like, I, I'm just saying that, like, there are multiple horror movies and whatnot and so on where the only person who survives is the person who locked himself in the freezer. And then the help comes a few hours later and when the sun comes up and they find the person in the freezer and they're like <laughs> They can't talk and they want to They're like, what happened here? What happened here? Who, who, who what killed everybody? And they're like asking all these questions about what's happening and the person can't answer because they're all fucked up because they were in the freezer for a few hours And it's like, this is a trope so how is she dead? I'm so confused. And it's phrasing it like she just died right now. Like, like Silas is like, well, Caitlin's dead. A uh, Dylan, 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 Dylan. I don't know what to do here. I'm gonna be honest. I don't know if I should just let Caitlin die in the freezer because it's really funny and just see what happens with Dylan and see how solo Dylan's gonna work out for the night, uh, or if I should save D uh, Caitlin and see how these guys like fare. Uh, with Caitlyn and, and Dylan, but we have, because yeah, we have done Caitlyn and Dylan before, but that was with Silver, so that's out of commission. That doesn't mean the gun is basically useless, so it doesn't really matter that she lost it by dying in the freezer. <laughs> How is she dead in the freezer? The cops are gonna be here in like an hour, I think. Like, anybody can let her out. If, si if Dylan survives this scene, he can let her out. What is she, it's like when Altair falls in water in Assassin's Creed 1 and he just dies instantly because he's water soluble or something. Like, I'm. <laughs> I'm sorry, we've been here for a while. I just. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready for this. I wasn't ready for how stupid this moment is. <laughs> She's. She locks herself in the freezer. She goes in alone, so she just, she just abandons Dylan. So they're not even gonna, like, try to survive together. But then also she just like, the game doesn't even account for the idea that she someone can let her out later. She's just instantly written off as dead and the fucking rewind system is like, will you save her? You know what? Man, Caitlyn. Caitlyn, you're such a disappointment in this game. She seemed, uh, the game sets her up to be like the no nonsense, let's do that. Well, kind of a lot of nonsense actually. Verbally, she's a lot of nonsense. She just spouts nonsense for fun and just gets on everyone's nerves for fun and so on because she's like that like but not in the way that Emma is more like the way that Dylan is uh, But I I could be misremembering but I played the game twice now I Feel like well no, she does get to shoot Emma yeah, she does shoot Emma three times in the car scene. So if you have the, if you have the car scene, she does something finally. But other than that, Caitlyn is set up as being the badass of the group. Like she's the one that has that's very verbal about gun safety and is talking about what to do. But then also she very clearly knows how to use it. That's the whole point of that scene. Like look at her popping all those watermelons, even though you did it too because it's relatively easy in a video game, but wow, in-universe, she's the best one, is what that scene says about her gunness. But then she, like, I've played the stupid stealth scene now twice, and she just gets her gun stolen every time with while well, accomplishing nothing. And she doesn't shoot, and she doesn't, like, pull any moves or even do anything comprehensible of what she could was even trying to go for. And, uh... So in my first playthrough, the only time she ever got to use a gun was when she gets killed by Caleb. <laughs> like, she, so the only shot she takes in the entire story was when she missed. Whoops. Uh, that's rough.
In this one, she she got to fight against Emma, and so she got to have a payoff of that scene. So it at least made sense that they set that up in the first place. But other than that, like, between the freezer scene and the stealth scene, I'm just like, please, please, Caitlyn, please ever be the character they set you up to be. I can't believe she... You know what? All right, bye. Oh no, Dylan, she died in the freezer. Are you just gonna sit here and die? Tell me you're not gonna just sit here and die. The freezer's open. The freezer's open in that scene. Well, can I rewind this one? But there wasn't a choice. It, wait, do you... Wait, okay, so it's, okay, now I gotta rewind Dylan dying, which is also rewinding Caitlyn dying, right? This is a two for one, right? Since apparently her choice killed Dylan, how, where is this gonna rewind to? How far, how long ago did I do, did I doom him exactly? <laughs> but I will point out, in that cutscene, the freezer door was open, so Caitlyn's even less dead. Anyway. <laughs> What? If you un If you undo this death, you will lose significant progress. To save Dylan, you will be returned to chapter 1. No. What? What? <laughs> There's no other way to save him than to start the entire game over? That's not really a rewind function then, is it? I... I wasn't expecting to be baffled this quickly after the, the, the Caitlyn scene. I guess I should have saved Caitlyn. I didn't expect it to just be a zero gameplay choices left. Dylan's also dead. Like... I'm half expecting that in the scene where they kill Travis and and uh, and Laura and Ryan back to back with Silas, it asks you to rewind after every individual death, as if you get a, cho a choice or not. All right, well, cancel. I'm not extending this playthrough ten episodes right now, so I guess there we go. Everyone, I figured they might die, but huh. How is Caitlyn dead? <laughs> How is Caitlyn dead? And why was Silas on the ground? I don't understand. He wasn't wounded. He was just like laying on the ground like, oh man, I can't get up. <laughs> it's been an interesting night, wouldn't you agree? The cycle continues, for some at least. I have to admit, you've disappointed me, but not as much as you could have done. We're bonded now, you and I. And though the full moon will come again and the curse remains, this night is over. Don't worry. I'll never forget what you did here. But don't you dare ever step foot in Hackett's quarry again. If I see you poking your nose where it doesn't belong, I will never stop haunting you. Wherever you go, I'll be right behind you. The breath on your neck, always just out of sight. If you ever come back, I will haunt you until the day you die. Is she being pretend disappointed? Because Silas is alive. She's like, oh, the curse wasn't lifted. I'm like, I can I lift the curse? <laughs> Well, <laughs> the worst characters are alive together, and Nick somewhere.
Max was cured. He waits for Laura, but she'll never arrive. Ryan declined the bite, and then he died. Laura was stabbed to, get to death, so that was very much like, thanks for not killing me, that really was a real callback. Travis was shot. They all got each other. But the parents just mysterious. they just walked away awkwardly. Like, the mom and dad just awkwardly walked out of the room in one shot. That's just like, hey, they're leaving. So he dies if Bobby's not ready to fight the wolf, I guess? Constance is protected by her Bob. Her, bo her son Bobby. So Bobby saves them. So that implies that Bobby can die at some point and not save them? But I don't know when. I'm not sure when that happens because... Oop. Abigail got her head torn off. They're both alive. Congrats. You caused this, you fuck. And you never die in my playthroughs. Please jump in the water. Nick survived the full moon in werewolf form. Dylan was slaughtered by Savage Caleb just before morning. Caitlin froze death in the freezer when nobody came for her in the morning. Having survived the full moon, Caleb Hackett returned to his human form. Nobody came for her in the morning. There's people here, right? Nobody came for her in the Emma and Jacob are alive. I don't understand why Caitlyn's dead. The White Wolf is alive, you fuck. So that's interesting. It said that Nick's infected. So Nick got bit by the by Silas, not or Caleb. Massacred. What do you make of that, Nathan? Kind of a gross way to put it. No. Why make a pile? I think it's metaphorical. At least I hope it's metaphorical. I thought we'd done the whole Hackett's Quarry thing. Not this Hackett's Quarry thing. What was this like three months ago? Old news, dude. Anton, introductions first. We are Bizarre Yet Bonafide, the podcast of the paranormal. I'm Grace. And I'm Anton. And together, we explore the possibility of supernatural involvement in real life, everyday occurrences. And that's exactly what they are, real life, everyday occurrences. With a shadow of spiritual, supernatural occurrences. No. <sighs> okay, so. I hope you've got hat insurance, Anton, because I'm about to blow your mind! Did you just ask if I had hat insurance? Yes. It's responsible to insure those things which mean the most to you. A hat? Yes. Okay, I know where your priorities lie. Go on. Anyway, there actually is a real reason that we're coming back to Hackett's Quarry. There have been some... developments. And I've sourced some information. I remain skeptical, but I'm all ears. Under my hat. I was hoping you'd say that. Oh god, why? Why are you smiling? Stop it, I hate it. Why? I had braces. I have to make use of them sometimes. You do have very pretty teeth. Thank you. That's something that a lot of podcast listeners might not know about me. <clears throat> so, it just so happens I've got someone on the inside. So today's episode is going to have a bit of a show-and-tell vibe to it. Who do you know on the inside? The inside of where? What? You know someone on the inside? Don't we all have someone on the inside? You know, an inner critic that says, Stop doing a podcast! No one's listening! You should listen to that voice, Grace. Okay, well, what I really meant is, let's call it an anonymous donation. You know, we're not the only ones who flagged this as a bizarre situation. Someone actually reached out to us. They sent us a package. Did you? You didn't open it. Anyone who... I don't trust anyone who listens to this show. Oh! I couldn't wait to open it. Surprise! 
anonymous donation. Okay, you've always promised me since day one of this podcast that if you could see true evidence, you will consider all options, right? Did you not say that? I did say that, yes. I mean, I know you... Knowing for a fact that we would never see any evidence, I did say that. Okay, well, we've been sent information and we need to decide whether it's bizarre or bona fide. Okay, fine. Let's do this. For anyone listening at home, we are about to open a package from a mysterious person who listens to this show. If you are the one who sent us whatever it is, congrats, you got us. Sorry, the tape is just really, really, there's just so much tape on the package. Give me your keys. Do you have like a key I could like slice at it with? No, I don't want you to dull my key. Just use your fingers. Dull my key. Is that even a thing? Can you dull a key? <clears throat> door. Of course I lock my door. What are you what are you hiding? What am I hiding? Do you not lock your doors? No, I have nothing to hide. You think that ghosts are real, but you don't lock your doors? No, ghosts couldn't open my doors. They could walk through my walls, Anton. Okay, you need to be more concerned with murderers. Take a look. Apparently they found another body. Whoa! You can't just show me a picture of a dead body. You got to tell me before you're gonna do that. Okay, then let's take this over. Anton, can I show you a picture of a dead body? No! I can't work with that, Anton. Okay, fine, yes, you. It, it's a dead body. Okay, wh what is this? What am I looking at? It's one of the hikers that went missing. Do you remember that? Yes, that's the true part of the story. Yeah. Ed Benson was his name. He was drowned in the lake. Okay, drowned or was drowned? Now you're getting grammatical. I'm not getting grammatical. If you drown, you just went swimming and you drowned. If some, if he's been drowned, then someone drowned him. Well, then I think I implied precisely what I meant to imply. Now, of course, I can't verify this info, of but... Of course you can't. What, do I have, like, a history of not verifying Yes, info? it's fake. Okay, but I feel <laughs> very strongly that he was drowned. Okay, well, do the police know about this? Are the Hackett family suspects? Okay, okay, I like that you are getting into this. Here's the thing. The newspaper says this guy's still missing, right? He looks pretty fucking found in this picture. Okay, yeah, I mean, he's not missing, he's right there, but yeah. why? Why would they say he's still missing? Because it is a conspiracy, a cover-up. Don't you see, they're all in on it. I, I, who is all in on it? The Hackett family? The Hackett family, the North Kill Gazette. I told you I've been suspicious of them from the start. Okay, uh, okay, so there's the one hiker, he's dead. What about the other one? Ann Radcliffe? still missing. Who knows how many bodies are still down there, though. I don't know. This is pretty inconclusive. I, I'm sorry that the guy drowned, but this kind of seems like a big to-do over nothing. Or is it a big undo of something, which is what a cover-up is? Okay, you can't just twist my words like that. Okay, so I anticipated your skepticism, which is why I saved this little gem for next. Finally, you're gonna present me with some ghost ectoplasm. Put out your ring finger. I've got a little gem to slide onto it. What do you got? Leaked photos from the hiker's camera. Photos that show them at Hackett's Quarry. So maybe they were there and then they dropped their camera. It happens all the time. Yeah, and then they drowned. dropped their camera whilst being murdered. And their bags were found there too. Oh, no way. Do you have a fake photo of them, too? Oh, please. Okay, so you have a picture of bags. These could be anyone's bags. Well, they match up to the ones in their photos from their camera, and they have a monogram of their initials. I think, at least. Or it's water damage. I can't tell. Yeah, okay. That's not nothing. I'll give you that. So, we've got to talk a little more about the Hackett family. Right, so these guys are like the heritage landowners, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Their great-great-great-grandparents were trappers who claimed the land way back when. They just claimed it? Yes, they did. They put their flag on it just like the man on the moon. The Hackett family flag, right. Well, apparently when they claimed it, they found Quartzite. Quartzite? Okay, I was hoping you would ask. 
Fun fact, every building in the whole of New York is made of quartzite. That's not fun or a fact. Most of them are, but I digest. Digress? It was a pun. They dug the quarry and hit great heights of success before Septimus Hackett, classic bad guy name, the seventh son of the trappers, the number seven has great supernatural powers, uh -huh. closed the mine down. Okay, so then You're they losing only me. had the land to live off. Yes, you say only, but this land actually spans acres. That's a lot of forest. A lot of unexplored darkness. Ooh, okay, a great place to hide, to have all these dark secrets for this strange, reclusive family. Mm-hmm. And this is where we start to get a little more into paranormal territory. Okay, here acres we go. Acres and acres of haunted woods. If you say so. It's funny because there's such a clear buildup of like, here's pretty decent evidence that these hikers were murdered. Like these are their backpacks covered in blood and damage and their names are on them. And here's the photos of them at Hackett's Quarry with the backpacks. And also here's one of their bodies in the lake, which frankly, when you lead with that one, it kind of deflates any further evidence. You're like, there he is. He's in the lake. Uh, he might, I'm, I don't know if he was just murdered in general or if he was a werewolf and they threw him in the lake because then he would, because they don't do well with water and maybe that like helps or something, or maybe they'd even shot him with silver and threw him in the lake. I don't know. Uh, supposedly they don't want blood on their hands though. So it, they're not doing a very good job at that if they murdered the hikers also. But then she just goes full deranged after that, but uh, then goes into the supernatural stuff and it's like very disconnected. But I, I guess I'm just sitting here wondering, like, who who gave this information out? Because uh, everyone's dead. Also, I'm thinking about Nick, and it's like, yeah, I guess I guess because Max is saved by by shooting Chris. I thought a lot of people might be saved by by shooting Chris. But at, at, to correct my own mistake earlier, like, yeah, Chris is chained in the attic this entire night. So nobody, that's a bad reveal for us. Because that means that every single person who got bit tonight was not bitten by Chris. Which means that everybody, wait. Uh, how does this math work out? Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. I lost the thread for a second. I'm like, hang on a minute, that doesn't make sense. So Nick is bitten by Caleb. Because Chris is chained in the attic, so nobody who gets bit by, uh, who got bit tonight was bitten by Chris. But... If you get bitten on the island, then you were bitten by Max, who was bitten by Chris. So that's why Emma's safe. Emma is saved by killing Chris because Emma was in that branch. But Nick gets bitten by Caleb, which is higher up on the branch, which is very bad. Huh. Oh! I, I just I'm, I just registered a thing I've overlooked until now, which people probably pointed out two weeks ago or something. Uh, Dylan is even safer than I thought in this game. Like he might he can probably die in the crane, and he definitely died the ending. But Dylan has a lot of plot armor, doesn't he? Because uh, we have the choice to shotgun or chainsaw his arm off when he gets bitten. But also, he might not get bitten at all, like what happened before in this playthrough. But last playthrough, when he did get bitten, didn't he get bitten by Kaylee? Who then dies a minute later? So I think if you don't... Huh, I'd have to check this. Because someone, someone's probably done it, I'm sure. I think that if you don't do anything about Dylan's problem, he gets to just keep his arm. And also not get chains... Okay. So I think it's actually impossible for Dylan... Yeah, okay. 
I was thinking about this possibility of this playthrough of having Dylan be bitten and be one of the wolves going around. But because of the logic of how this works, he would have been saved the moment Kaylee dies. And Kaylee, and I checked this because I was curious because it didn't seem possible. Uh, Kaylee cannot be saved. Kaylee always dies in that scene immediately afterwards. She always gets killed by Laura, and we have no control over events tied to that because it's the reveal of Laura even being around. So that's always found, like that pool scene always happens. So Kaylee always dies, which I believe means Dylan is always uh, safe, even through that scene. Huh. That's kind of disappointing, man. Yeah. Just in general, I'm uh, I'm noticing how many spots the game opens a scene and then closes it where all the branches mostly tie back into the same ending. So pretty much the same story happens every time in a way that's like a lot of the variability is more of an illusion than not. And then the characters who can die, they pretty much just get isolated side scenes where they never get to be part of the story with the other people for the most part because they don't like... They don't write a version of the story where Emma makes it back to the lodge. Well, she did make it back to the lodge, but she turned into a wolf. Like, they don't they don't have a version of the story where Emma is, like, hanging out with the other characters because she's back, and so on. So, like, characters pretty much just are out of the story the moment they could have died. Which is very noticeable because of the fact that Abigail could have died in the next scene. And Abigail is just out of the story for most of the game in the playthrough where she survived. Like... She does have the payoff with the silver shell, which happens with Laura. And so, like, that's a, that's a little thing, but that's, like, the only thing? Like, she skulks into the basement, then goes up into the, uh, the security room. And she kind of just hangs out with those cameras for the rest of the game until the, until the silver shell scene happens. Uh, and besides that, that's, like, for, like, a full, like, half of the game, she's just, like not around and it's like it's very, it's really noticeable how much they're like well this character could die so we're not going to spend time with them and the characters that do get a lot of screen time which is caitlin and and ryan and and dylan and laura by the end they're all basically unkillable until near the end and so uh it's, that's why they get so much screen time and i'm like ah i don't i don't like i don't love how obvious the seams are but I can acknowledge the idea, like, I, I, I acknowledge the fact that writing massively divergent branches is a lot of writing, and the writing is the easy part. It's a huge project to actually implement all of those different paths and act them out with real actors and do all the, like, HD graphics and whatnot. So at the end of the day, I guess everybody who wants more from this series, this franchise, I don't know. This, like... This is a style of game that bucks up against the limitations of what a studio can do in many cases. So in some ways, we're kind of getting right back into what I've said about RPGs, which is that like Western style RPGs are one of my favorite types of games because of how ambitious they are. And they will, they will pretty much always be horribly flawed because they're essentially trying to compete with Dungeons and Dragons and the sheer amount of freedom that that kind of game has. But that's a game that exists entire, entirely in your in your imagination with no production value. So you can just do stuff. But a, a video game trying to create freedom would have to actually implement all these different storylines and assets and so on. And it's just unreasonable. And yet these crazy people keep trying. They keep trying to make RPGs. Not as much anymore, actually. Kind of... The entire genre is kind of dying because most AAA companies do not want anything to do with RPGs. They want quote unquote RPG elements as a sailing, as a, uh, as a bullet point on their boxes to sell games that are not RPGs. Wow, it has progression. Wow, it has grinding. Wow, it has randomized loot. Don't you like Skinner's boxes? That's what RPGs are, right? They're not. That's not what they are. Uh, they'll, they'll take all of the profitable parts of the RPG formula and not the actual ambitious, impressive part of it and make those games instead. Uh, and to an extent, a version of that's happening with with Detroit and with uh, the Quarry and Until Dawn and so on is that like, this is like almost the modern version of that concept, even though it's more, it's arguably more of a spinoff of adventure games than anything, but that's tenuous too. But like this Telltale Games formula 
is trying to have this big branching story with different variables and so on and actually try to pair them off. But you can really see where the seams happen. And it's up there with like how both uh, Walking Dead and uh, Mass Effect are like have the famous choice of like which character lives and which character dies. But then like this, when, no matter what happens, like the surviving character kind of fills the same slot ish in whatever scenes they're in and the, but also has a reduced story element because they could be dead and like you definitely see the seams here almost never does somebody have the balls and also resources and commitment to like really just commit to the idea of like no that character who dot who could have died an eternity ago we're gonna write them into the main story all the way through and for the people who died who lost that character we're just gonna have to write a different version of the entire story uh that's just not a thing that happens uh and frankly if you want that i guess you pretty much just have to play visual novels because at, at least at that stage most of the work is the writing there's definitely somebody there's there's you definitely have to make like cgs every now and then if you want to like make it feel fully featured and all that but most of it's just writing and posing the little portraits so one guy can be crazy enough to write the entire thing in an alternate way and do that but that's like the only place you'll see that like a video game outside of that genre really won't do that kind of thing in, unless it's in a very incredibly superficial way like haha i quip every now and then i'm still here because like if they actually are a load-bearing plot character it would be such a headache to have them be possible to be dead already so uh yeah i don't know there's my rant that's been cooking for a bit but uh i'm happy i went back and saw it again it's very interesting to see in great detail how it goes i find it ish i find it a bit iffy though that like the game's a game with this much uh, variability and constant references to the fact that your choices matter and there are totally branches and so on, it heavily implies the fact that uh, replay value is a selling point, but I think replaying these games actually does do more to reveal the cracks in their formula than it does reward the idea of like, wow, look how much changed, because like, this one in particular, we're just seeing mostly the same scenes happening in basically the same order uh, with only the tiniest little bows tied to the idea sometimes that like oh this character's alive we'll acknowledge that and be like oh he's over they're over there and this they're just gonna wait out the sun the sunrise there's uh there's emma and jacob and uh even that only sometimes happens like jacob and emma have a little a little ending scene here last time jacob had an ending i guess where he just cries in the woods but like Someone like Dylan, as far as I can tell, just doesn't ever get ending scenes. And, and most of the characters don't. And uh, if you look at the negative reviews for the, these games on Steam, that's a lot of them, is that the how rushed the ending is. And the feeling of the ending being rushed in these games, I think, comes from the fact that they don't commit to making these uh, extended outros where the surviving characters have some kind of resolution. Like... There's the question of like whether or not any of the couples in this game are actually good for each other or even would be couples outside of their like the five minutes of fleeting interest they had and then and then horror happened. And they're all happening. There's like a very big emphasis on this like f this like poorly faded thing where like every couple like e Emma and Jacob just broke up and every other couple is suddenly kind of becoming a couple on the last day like the day after the last day because they're stuck here for one more extra day that's how like last minute their relationships are so there's like a, there's there's this element of like that they're doomed from the start and it'd be interesting to pay off that at all or think about that or question whether uh whether these events would cement that or drive them further apart like they never want to talk to each other again or remember what happened today or this one throwaway moment turned into a relationship because they're like tied to each other via trauma of this fucked up thing that happened in a sort of like an echo kind of way echo the visual novel that i'm playing right now uh like paying that off in some way would be interesting exploring those characters would be interesting but just kind of like it's almost like a red herring, I guess. Not really red herring, no, because it's not. That's like a mystery term, but like it's like a it's a dropped concept. Like it doesn't come up ever again, and it's maybe intentional, but it super does not come up again, and it feels weird that it doesn't. 
more than everyone, uh, this very theme continues to Jacob. No, 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 sorry. This continues to Laura and Max, who are completely separate from the scenario of everybody else. But they were already a couple before camp. But even they have this like faded to be separated element because they're specifically it's it's plotted that they're going to college and max didn't get into that college so they're not so they're going to be split up too it's like it's very consistent that there's like this this element that they're like they're poorly faded or poorly timed relationships and so the fact that none of them pay off or we don't even get scenes of the surviving couples together if you get keep them both alive or even just like a, everybody who's alive just has some kind of talk or moment at the end when they're in their like shock blankets when the ambulance arrives or just anything the fact that the game just ends on a shot of a police cruiser and that's it it's just like not enough for what they do but more than it but once again above all else caitlin should still be alive what the fuck Welcome back to Bizarre Yet Bonafide. Anton, today I'm actually going to pass you some light reading. Okay, you're gonna make me read this? Mm-hmm. All right, um, this is... What you're seeing now is a copy of a letter that Kaylee Hackett wrote to her grandma, allegedly. <sighs> All right, uh, this seems like more of a you job, but I suppose right, I can read I, this. Right, but I feel like if some of the evidence comes from your mouth, it will have more clout. Right, okay, here we go. Gammy, how long we gonna drag this shit out? Mm. I know family is the most important thing, but I wanna know what's outside the forest, outside this damn house and camp, and I sure as hell know that ain't about to happen cause of who we are. Maybe we can explain what's going on. Fucking show people. Then they'll know we got no control over it. I know you just trying to protect us, but one day you won't be here no more, and right now it feels like we stuck in a dark hole. I can't sleep, Gammy, or if I do, I dream about that fucking fire? We were just dumbass kids back then. I wish it never happened. Love, K, X, O, X, O. That took a turn. Yes. Dream about that fucking fire. Does that not read as the haunted scribblings of someone who saw something that they shouldn't have seen? Yeah, no, I'm fully creeped out. She was clearly going through some stuff. And this is legit? I mean, I don't know why someone would fake it. Then again, I can't verify any of this. So you've got to suspend your disbelief slightly. Man, this poor girl. Yeah. There was something going on, something eating away at her, and that's what I want to explore. Okay, well, consider my disbelief suspended, for now. So, I don't think that's gonna be a problem for this next one. Oh god, why? Holy shit, this is a cease and desist letter. And it's addressed to us. Dude, why didn't you tell me about this? Well, it was never actually sent. That's mad shit, fam. What? Signed by Travis Hackett. We're not doing anything illegal. Aren't we? Think about it. I guess it wasn't technically sent to us. Cease and desist letters come from people hiding stuff. Hmm, okay. And next we have this empty vial thing. Now to me, empty implies that it was once full. Samesies. Blood stains, maybe? Filled with blood? Looks that way. Freaky. Some kind of ritual thing? Do I detect a hint of belief? Love a good ritual. Kind of fucked up that these guys know who we are, though. Okay. Anton, what you see next pretty much confirms it. They are a crackpot conspiracy theorist a loser? Shit went down at Hackett's Quarry this summer. Real. Supernatch. Shit. See, you always say things like this, and you're always overselling it. You always have to oversell something to even sell it. That's capitalism, baby. All right. Okay. This is actual footage from one of the trail cams in Hackett Woods. Oh, cool, a camera in the middle of the woods? Did they find a squirrel? Be honest, if it was mounted on a mountain bike, you would watch that whole video. Yes, of course, is there a mountain bike involved? No, but take a look anyways. 
Okay. That is a bear? That is a bear to you? There is no way that is a bear. Okay, well, it uh, a skinny bear? Okay, this could be some of the clearest footage of something like this I've ever seen. Right, it's kind of blurry, though. Blurry and convincing. Sometimes the truth can't be contained within the lines. Right, yeah. And also, footage is pretty easy to fake. Technology is super scary. It's just yeah, siren what head. What the hell were the Hackett's doing with footage like this anyways? Huh, yeah, that's a good point. Weird little video of a skinny bear. Yeah, I don't know. Again, you keep saying a skinny bear. Have you seen a skinny bear? Yes, that's Bears very sad. Oh. Yeah, polar bears. <laughs> it's hard for them to find food sometimes. Don't feel too bad for them, though. They're nasty. Okay, but putting the Hackett family aside for a moment, there's more to this. Are you ready for some real spooky shit? I'm ready for real spooky shit. I don't know if you can provide it, but please try. <sighs> Don't get too freaked out. I'll try my hardest. Okay. Do you want to hold my hand? No. Okay. Do you need someone to comfortingly pat your back? Please just say what you're going to say. Do you want me to turn all the lights on so you don't I don't want you scared? to do anything. I want you to say what you have. Okay. So what's this? What are we looking at now? A photo by one of the counselors. Emma Mountebank downloaded from her phone. Oh my God. Is this real? Well... <laughs> That is what we're here to discuss. Okay, this looks shocked. I mean, doesn't it? Okay, but w if you downloaded photos from my phone, yes, they would all be shopped as well. There would be a filter on it to make my eyes look big and cheeks look pink. But I don't even think that has even any of those filters. Look at the eyes and tell me that's not real danger. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, weird, bizarre, yet bona fide. What the hell happened? More than we are being told. Yeah? There's something else, too. Okay. <sighs> Look at what happens when I put it through a negative filter. Whoa! Okay, what is that? It's her! The hag of Hackett's quarry! See? Full circle! God, uh, no, 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 no. That could be anything. Like what? Please, try to explain I, I don't know that. what's that thing. There's this thing that makes your mind. You see faces and stuff. There's people. There, there's Jesus shows up on toast every once in a while. This could be whatever. Well, I don't need to hear too much more about your breakfast, but I can't believe that you're still questioning this. You're doubting your own cynicism now, though. I can tell. I can smell the doubt that you usually apply to other things on yourself. Picks or didn't happen, right? Well, picks so did happen. No, picks... You can fabricate experiences you can't. I need to, I, I would need to see the Hag of Hackett's Quarry uh -oh. myself. Well, if you want to go to North Kill with me, no. I actually have a really I don't. good okay. relationship. I believe you. Okay, but you know what? I have something that couldn't be fabricated. Claw marks in a wall. I, I could make this right now. <laughs> really? Find me a wall, I'll take a fork and just go to town. Wow. What an artisan. <laughs> well, to me, this isn't actually overtly supernatural because it could have just been, you know, an animal or someone's angry parrot, but it'd be unfair not to discuss. Why? Because the audience has come to expect a certain length of the podcast, so we actually have to sometimes do a little bit of filler. Yeah, that's true. We don't have much to talk about. Well, whoever <laughs> did reach out thought it was worth sharing. There's a chance this is all just a prank, you know? It was just a prank, Anton! Who even are you? It's probably just some teenager who's making fun of you. It's probably that dude who came on and gave us a one-star review. I would love to tell you that that's implausible, but a teenager making fun of me is probably the most familiar experience of my life. Moving on! How about this? Tell me this isn't freaky as shit. Oh! Is that skin? Skin, fur, whatever you want to call it, really. Okay, it looks human. Is that a tattoo? I don't think so. Or maybe a really bad one. Wait. Is it? Apparently, this belongs to whatever creature supposedly caused all this. Okay, do we have the actual thing? Did they capture it? Can I... Can I see it in the uh, in its weird flesh, so to speak? You want to touch the flesh. I want to touch the flesh. No. Well, 
Fortunately, the person who sent this to me was smart enough to know that it would be dangerous to steal the actual evidence, not to mention they might suspect that you, Anton, would hide it away so as to sabotage this legitimate investigation. Right, I am known for destroying evidence. Convenient that we can't see the real deal, huh? Come on, man, you're desperate not to believe. If there's reasonable doubt, you have to assume it's not real, Occam's Razor. But look at everything we've That's seen. Not Put it all together, objectively. What that means? So those kids, the ones who survived. Yeah. Why aren't they coming out with all this? Kids are always on the internet. Th these kids actually have something interesting to say. Why aren't they telling anyone? I don't know, but someone did come out with it. Whoever gathered all this info and submitted it to me. Right, do we know who this is? This could just be a teenager making fun of you. No, a teenager couldn't possibly do this. I think you're being cyberbullied. This is carefully curated information. Someone went into the depths of a dark mystery and retrieved all this information and gave it to me. Someone smart, someone clever, someone genius. And it's all been hushed. And if what we're looking at has any truth to it, then I'm not surprised. I think we've been contacted to expose it. So these kids who survived to this, they're just out there living their lives? I mean, that's that seems weird to me. I wonder what it took to keep them quiet. Whatever well, two really of them happened, are. They'll be carrying it like a curse wherever they go. So you really still don't know who sent this to you? Nope, complete anonymity. But the photos, the way they're all set out, it looks like evidence. Like they came from somewhere, I don't know, official. Okay, turn it off. What, why? Why didn't you tell me about this before? What, uh, I've been telling you about this it This is actual now. stuff, Grace. We have to take this to the police. Okay, so. Then you believe I it. don't know, maybe. You never believe anything. Why is this any different? Because it's starting to make sense, okay? Our name on that letter, the missing hikers, the family secrets. I, when you put it all together, it's certainly something. Someone's trying to tell us something. And we should probably stop recording this right now and tell the authorities, right? Heck no, it's just getting juicy. And who says we're not the authorities? Uh, I do. We're not the authorities. What? It's not like we have a moral duty to take this evidence to the authorities. Yes, you do. We do. <laughs> Anathema. <clears throat> Why did that get said? Family arrested for, ki for killing several summer camp teens. Hackett family incarcerated for the murder of summer camp teens thanks to evidence brought to light by podcast duo. Oh. Uh... Oh. Consequences. So, we arrested Lance and his wife and Bobby? Because Chris is dead. Tyler's dead. Is his name Tyler? There's so many names to keep track of. There's so many characters. I think it's pretty much just the old couple and, and Bobby, basically, that's left. Uh, huh. So that's the consequence of getting all the evidence, is that you get, uh, kind of the wrong people arrested? Kind of. I don't, it's not, it's not exactly what the truth is, you know? But they're kind of, I mean, they're responsible for having a fucking summer camp there in the first place. That's negligent. Uh, Chris was fucking up that. Uh, he shouldn't have been doing that. Did he... Did he have a whole summer camp just to try to, like, socialize his kids a bit? Like, did, did he did he just bring kids every there every year for the, so they could hang out with his kids? The premise is hard to accept, but I've, we've been over this a bit. But yeah, like, it's... Why is there a summer camp in the most dangerous possible place? And why do they start the day after uh, the, the, home, the dangerous day and then end the day before the dangerous day? Like, that's cutting it close. But as much as it's a plot point, the extent to which they cut it close, like, people... The whole plot happens because the next day is the full moon, and the whole opening happened because the day before was the full moon. I... W there's a full moon in the middle. It's a two-month 
it's a two month thing. And we know that that full moon did what it's supposed to do because during that full moon, uh, yeah, during, during that full moon is when Max transforms in prison. And during that time, uh, Tyler, I think his name, unless I just suddenly forgot his name, the co the sheriff was out there hunting after Silas. So you know Silas is out there at that point. Although Silas seems questionably threatening, he seems to pretty much just attack people. He, he, Silas mostly just seems to attack the people uh, who are on that one road. So he's not discovered outside of that. Uh, so maybe they think it's safe outside of that time? <clears throat> But if it's, if that, if the full moon in the middle of the trip is supposed to be safe somehow, then like, why are they so freaked out about getting the kids out in time for the full moon at the end? And for that matter, why do they get attacked by a wolf who is presumably Caleb? Like, they have cages for the family and they specifically had notes about putting Caleb and... Uh, Hannah, uh, off-camera sister, and Chris into those three cells, right? So, like, why didn't they do that? <laughs> why weren't the three wolves in the three cells? Why was Chris chained upstairs if they had a note about putting them in the in the cages that electrify? <clears throat> the entire plot happens because they apparently can't contain Caleb. Huh. Because, yeah, I, I was kind of under the impression that, like, Chris and Caleb just run free every year and just run around in the woods and and uh, are a general menace. But why would they be? Like, they do have a cage to keep them in and a note about keeping them in the cage. And if the rest of the family's job is to hunt for Silas then you would very much not want the other three werewolves to be roaming and also be a threat, because they don't care that you're out to get Silas. So this like a... This feels like a contradiction, right? They have a place to keep those characters, and they were keeping Chris, but not the two siblings? Did the two siblings just decide not to go to their cage this year? Or this month? And that's just a, a point of drama within the family? There is the confession note where she's like, how much longer are we going to keep this up? I want to see the outside world, which is frustration that makes sense. But did they genuinely, did the brother and sister that kind of caused all this then just refuse to go in their cages this month? Maybe. Because they, they, I don't think they're just afraid of Silas when they're, because they're having a big freak out. Like, oh my God, the kids aren't going to be safe at the beginning of the game. And that can't just be about Silas, because Silas comes out once in the middle of summer break. And there's that that's a plot point that the game just never acknowledges, the fact that that gap is there. Hmm. Well, this has been the quarry. <laughs> I investigated it for a second run for the diminishing returns, I guess. I wanted to see how wildly divergent it might, it might be, and I was kind of disappointed, because it definitely tries very hard not to branch that much. Uh, and I have what might be some explicit plot points, or people countered them three weeks ago, and I am being very frustrating right now. Those both happen all the time. So, I don't know, those are my thoughts. See, see you next time, happy Halloween and whatnot. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this, and I didn't blow it by playing one game twice all month. <laughs>